Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Williams Lucky 7 pinball machine, and if you didn't see the previous videos, we did one where we kind of showed the condition it was in when we got it, and we worked on the power supply. Now, this particular game, we have a customer who has sent us some of their boards that we are repairing as we're repairing this one. So this is a Williams System 3 game which uses a Williams System 3 board set and our buddy has sent us boards from his Flash his Williams Flash which is a System 6 game uh, I think they were System 4 originally and then they also made System 6 versions because Flash sold a ton a ton mainly because Steve Ritchie is the king of pinball everybody knows that um, but we have his flashboards actually in our Williams system set, uh, our Williams uh, Lucky Seven. So we've been testing them in this game. You can't really play a game. I guess you could, but we've been in test mode and things like that. And we believe we have his power supply repaired. I took it out actually. This is our power supply for the Lucky Seven. And then we uh, did a little work on his MPUs. They are both working just fine. So we're going to take those back out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Lucky 7 MPU back in it and then in today's video that you're here in time for we're going to work on driver boards. Now the driver boards are the same in uh, in all of the games so if they're the same system but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, so I've got a working driver board already in there that is the one from the Lucky 7. However we're still going to do a little bit of preventative maintenance to it and I'll show you that here in a minute. We're fixing this game up so that we can sell it and we want to make sure that it is reliable as can be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull out our driver board, put our MPU back in, and then with the driver board on the, on the bench I'll show you uh, what it looks like and what we usually do to them and we'll look at his driver boards. Okay, so here is the Williams System 3 driver board. Now, there was no System 1 or System 2 that was released, so this is the very first solid state Williams uh, board set and it was used for system 3, system 4, system 6, and system 7. They skipped 5 for some reason. <laughs> um, so uh, system 3 games like the Lucky 7 is a system 3, system 4 is like Flash and then whenever they moved to system 6 they were still making Flash so some of the Flashes are system 6 and then system 7 I believe was stuff like Gorgar it might have been System 6, but it was around that time. They move in order. You get it. So this driver board drove things. So it has this big connector up here on the top that connects it to the MPU. Okay? This thing goes bad all the time. This connector is kind of janky. So there, there are these big pins on the MPU that push through these holes right here up inside of this socket and it just wasn't a great idea so these things they don't really have a long uh, they don't have a lot of um, you can remove them and replace them a certain number of times and then after that they're kind of worn so they you start losing uh, good connectivity through that so a common thing to do to make these more reliable is you take this off and you just replace them with the exact same thing but that gets you where you've got so let's say you can remove it 200 times before it starts screwing up and it's at 190 right now or whatever if I put a new one on there now we've got another 200 times we can take it apart now I know that sounds kind of come on now but that's what we're working with here <laughs> right? it's just how it was designed and it's um, in the pinball world, it's a pretty common thing. So whenever people are working on these, they always replace that. You can buy those little connectors. I've got a bunch of them here. And that's what we're going to do. So on all three of these boards, we're going to replace that connector. Now this one, just by looking at it, looks like maybe it was already replaced. So it's lighter in color than the Molex on the side. Can we use that to determine that it's already been replaced? I don't know. What do you think? Let's look at the back, shall we? It's clearly been replaced. We might get away with one. 
What do you think? Might get away with one. But these two definitely haven't been replaced. See the discoloring there? That's because these resistors run really hot, and that's actually from smoke. Now you notice on this board, this chip has been replaced. That's the one that runs the lamps. So just a general layout of the board, the MPU sits up here and talks to the driver board through this 40 pin connector. Okay, These PIAs, Peripheral Interface Adapters, if one of these is bad, it has the ability to lock up the MPU because the MPU has these do a little math or something, I don't know, or it talks back to it or whatever. I don't, I don't understand software very well. Um, but if one of these is messed up, shorted or something, it will, um, it will make it where the, the game board won't boot. That's above it. Okay. But notice, uh, so this one is the one that handles the switches. And there are only four little ICs between the edge of the board and the, that PIA. Okay. This one handles the lamps, so the, the board tells it to light up lights. All of this runs the lamps. Okay, this one runs the solenoids. Okay, so a typical the, so these run at like um, 40 volts or something like that. The lamps run at I think it's 24, uh, it's 18 volts, but it's matrixed, so the bulbs actually only get six volts at a time. It's just, I don't understand how that works, but that's how it is. Um, and then the switches run at five volts. So a common problem is under the playfield, you've got wires and metal and things hanging all over the place. And somebody takes a solenoid lug or a wire or something, and the solenoid voltage, the 40 volts, runs through the switch matrix voltage. So you get 40 volts coming through, and it fries these chips, and a lot of times fries the PIA. Okay, If this PIA gets shorted, 6821 peripheral interface adapter, if this one gets shorted in particular, that one will often lock up the board. So if you have a board that won't work with the driver board in it, and you think that the MPU is fine, a lot of times it's this PIA. If these lock on, or if these are messed up, they can also lock up the board, but not like a switch input will. Okay, so usually the board will boot if one of these are bad. All right, so with that said, um, you notice this one's been replaced. So that's the one that runs the lamps, but it makes you wonder if it was just from heat damage. You know, it could be these running so hot, fried it. Okay, notice on the one we had in the game, the same one's been replaced. Did they even use the same? Wow, they even used the same chip. Now, how in the hell is that possible? I get well, they're slightly different. See, look. So this is the one that was already in the game. This is the one that we got from our buddy James that we're repairing. If you look, though, the text is slightly different. It's a little thicker on that. The printing's a little thinner on this. So it could be that they're just original chips, and that's what everybody uses. The way I'm keeping them straight is the one that was in the game actually has a little bit of corrosion on it. Look at that. That's the one that, that's our original one. And his, uh, one of them actually says flash on it. Okay. And then this one doesn't say, but it was fixed by Docent Electronics in 2001 in Dayton, Ohio. All right, so I think, oh, another thing we need to talk about. This is... A pretty clean original board. Notice these resistors here. Look at that crap. I think those are the 27 ohm ones. Big old freaking... Are those wire wound? Is that what they call those? Okay. So here's the one that was in the Lucky 7. They've gotten hot. Look at that. Ugh. And then here's the one that James sent us. Someone went ahead and replaced them. Yeah, 27 ohm, 5 watt. So he has replaced them because they run so hot, they cook themselves sometimes. Okay, so how do you combat that? Well, one thing you can do is, instead of using 
40, uh, 44 bulbs on the play field, you can put in 47 bulbs, number 47, because number 47s run 40% cooler and use 40% 40, 40 less wattage than a number 44 bulb. So it originally had 44s in it. It's the number of the little incandescent that you put in it. You can replace those with 47s, and they look about the same. They're slightly dimmer. If, I mean, it's barely, barely perceptible. They're slightly dimmer, but they run 40% less uh, wattage and amperage and heat. I don't know about... Yeah, I guess wattage and amperage are uh, completely uh, correlated, right? So uh, you can put 47 bulbs in it, and it cools it down a little bit. So that's one of the things we do. It just You reduce strain on the board... By almost half. Now you can also put LEDs in it. I don't know if you can put them in this one without modifying something. You may be able to. I don't know. I'm not really a big LED guy on the older games. But there's nothing wrong with it if you like that look or if uh, um, you know if you put them in they're removable. So if you put LEDs in and then I get the game and go oh, I hate these LEDs I can just take them out and put regular ones in. So it's it's a no harm no foul mod. Right? Um but personally, I just don't like the way they look on the older games. I like the original warm look of the incandescents a little bit. And I understand other people think that's ridiculous, but that's up to you. You can think what you want. Um, so a lot of times people will put LEDs in it because it uses less power, it runs cooler, etc., etc., etc. So that would be one way to not have to worry about these as much. But since I'm putting bulbs in that only use 60% of the amperage and the wattage that also is addressing the issue and then another another thing is too this cooking is happening because the thing's left on 24 hours a day in a bowling alley um you know for four years and it cooks stuff like this in your home you're not going to have anywhere near that kind of problem so if it's in your house and you're not operating it you're just playing it every once in a while or maybe playing it on saturdays when you have a few of the the uh, the drinks and you're a little tipsy and you go downstairs to play your lucky seven pinball machine or your flash, <laughs> you really don't have to worry about you know oh my my resistors might get a little more cooked. It's it's not really an issue, but on location it was. So you have that, and then over here we have the solenoids. So each one of them is ran by this little tip one twenty two um, transistor, and then you have a little pre-driver transistor here that kind of is what integrates it to the um, the uh, logic level chips, right? So the MPU board tells the PIA, hey, turn on this coil. This chip talks to the pre-driver, which turns on the coil, which grounds the coil on the play field. And that's just, that's how it works. Okay. So we have our working one. Here. Again, I can tell because of the corrosion. We have our working one here, and then we have two that are untested. One of them was in a bag that said bad. Who knows? So we may end up with a PIA that's bad. It's not really an easy way to test those. You can test them with a multimeter, but you can't really prove that they work with a multimeter. So you can, you can use a multimeter and do a diode test between some of the pins. So if you don't know how to do that, you can basically put your multimeter on diode test. Okay, now this is not a perfect way to test this. I'm just going to show you. And then you can put your um, red lead on ground. I've just got it hooked on the edge of the board. I don't know if that will get us good enough ground or not. And then you can start probing pins. So I just figured out pin 1 must be ground because there's a dead short between pin 1 and ground. Pin 2 is giving me a voltage drop, so between 0.4 and 0.7, right? So on a diode test, you're looking for between 0.4 and 0.7 to basically say that it's doing the voltage drop that it should over that gate, right? And you can move through, and if there is a dead short inside the PIA, PIA you, will, you will find it this way, right? So you see what I'm doing. I'm just checking in the board, pin by pin by pin. Okay. Now this will not find everything that's wrong with the PIA, but like I said, if you've got a catastrophic failure, you may be able to find it like this. 
And if you're filming a video for YouTube, hell, you might as well try it and see what it does. You see what's going on here? So each one of these is giving me a voltage drop. Okay. So. So that, shit, that pin there, pin 18, must also be on ground. And to check it, you can just test on another one. Okay, it's the same way. So what's that tell us? Well, either they're both bad or pin 18 is tied to ground, and it's supposed to be like that. So all we're doing is we're, we're essentially comparing the, the, the ICs to the one next to it. So now here's another one. So pin 20 is giving me a 0.264 voltage drop. So let's try it on this other one. Okay, it actually is giving us the exact same number. Now, does it have to be the exact number? No, but it's similar. If that one's saying 0.2 and that one's saying 1.4, you know, like it's almost an open connection on a diode test, then it tells you there's a problem somewhere. Okay, does it matter if I know what how that chip's designed? No, I've got three of them right here. Just compare them together and see if they're similar. That's all you got to do. People complicate things. And it's, it seems like a lot of times people, they, they want to tell you a specific way to do a specific thing that's only applicable for that. Right? But this is applicable for every chip on the board. You can do the same thing with these. Because they're, they're IC chips and they're, they're based on gate logic, basically. So that's a good way of testing them. But like I said, it can't prove that it works. It can just prove if it's bad. Right? because something else inside of it might not be functioning properly, but we know at least the gates don't seem to be shorted. So, if you've got one that you think is bad, so like, let's say let's say we put this board on here, which is the one that we had on there, and it boots, and it does. So this board is functioning 100%, best I can tell, even with that corrosion. We went in the lamp test, uh, the switches seem to be working, maybe not all of them, but because uh, we didn't test all of them, and the solenoid test, everything's working, okay? Now let's say we put this one on and the game won't boot, right? Well, we know that it's probably not this transistor keeping the game from booting. The MPU specifically is just talking to these three PIAs, so one of those three PIAs must be keeping the game from booting. So if I go around and test this, I can probably figure out, okay, which one of these three is acting weird? And let's say this one, three of the pins are shorted, to ground. Well, I know that's probably my problem, you know, so you don't really even have to understand how they work. You just have to think about it logically and it'll help you track down a bunch of problems. So we'll see if that happens in this video. My, my guess is all three of these may work just fine, even though the one said bad, uh, or it may be the a new connector fixes them. So that's what I'm going to do. On the two that are that are untested, I'm just going to look around a little bit and see if I see anything weird on a, on a uh, PIA. And then we can try them in the game. Now, after we do that, if a coil locks on, well, we can focus on that. So, like, if, it, if we can get it to boot and the uh, one of the coils locks on, well, then we can we can figure out which one of these transistors goes to that coil and then figure out if it's the transistor or the, the driver chip or whatever. Or it, it could be the PIA, too. It could be that this one has a locked output that's always making the pop bumper pop uh, come on, right? But it's not it's not messed up in a way that will keep the board from booting. So it will boot up and immediately lock the, the pop bumper on or something like that, right? So we're just we're just trying to go step by step by step. We've got unknown, untested boards here, and I'm trying to, instead of just throwing it in the game, I'm trying to see if I can find anything on the one part that I can definitely check before I put it in. And then I'm going to also check these transistors before I put it in, just to make sure I don't have one that's obviously shorted um, that we that we need to replace ahead of time. You can do it on the lamp transistors too, but the truth is these usually don't act up that much. Sometimes you'll get a bad one. Knock on for mica. What is this stuff? That's like a that's like a melamine product, isn't it? Knock on laminated plywood. Um, particle board. Uh, so like if you get one of these messed up, it's it's not going to cause anything catastrophic or catch something on fire. It's just you're going to have a whole string of lights that aren't working. So that's my thought process behind it. A lot of times people tell me, oh, we should show what you do. I'm literally, I just showed you a little bit what I'm going to do. I'm going to literally go through six different chips, pin by pin, doing that. And then I'm going to test these transistors. I'm not going to film that for two hours. It's boring even to me. Imagine how boring it must be to you. 
So I'll come back if I find anything interesting. All right, folks. So I found a bunch of messed up ones. Let me show you. Let me show you. So the PIAs, these are the inputs and these are the outputs. Now, how do I know that? Well, it's not really input and output because on this one it's backwards. But the side that connects to the MPU, your problem is going to be basically something from this side screwing up, right? So you really only need to check the ones that are connected out of the board, right? So if one of these outputs is shorted, then the input might be screwed up or something, right? Or I guess on the switches, this is actually the input and that's the output. You get my point, okay? I didn't see anything wrong with these. Now, I started testing through the transistors, okay? So I'll show you how I usually do that. Like I said, it, it really doesn't even matter what the transistors are. It's just the theory of it, right? So uh, let's see how I was just doing it. So let's say I'm, I'm going to test these and I don't even know what they are. I think they're TIP-122s, tip uh, which you can replace with a TIP-102, just because that's the same on the uh, uh, Bally solenoid boards. Okay, So each one of these large transistors is connected in a row with three pins. You see there's an ugly one here where somebody replaced it, right? Now why does that look so ugly? It's because when the thing's short, a lot of times they burn up part of the board, okay? So the way I usually test a transistor, not knowing what, what the base collector emitter is, any of that, um, I just put a probe on ground, or I'll put a probe on the middle leg usually. So let's put the red probe, I may have this backwards, but we're about to find out. So I'm putting the red probe on ground. So see this, see this pin, this line right here, how it goes over, not to, on ground. So how it goes over to the center, the center leg. Now I could sit here and do this, right? But if I do that, it's better to do it over here because now I'm checking the trace and the connection to the transistor. So see when I do, if I test, so I've got my, I basically got my red probe on the center leg. And I'm, te I'm testing the outside legs, right? And I'm not getting any kind of measurement. So I'm going to reverse my probes and do the same thing. Okay, so now between the center leg with the black probe and one of the outside legs, I get 0 0.540. That's our voltage drop we're talking about. It's between 0.4 and 0.7. So there's a relationship. There's a gate relationship there, right? So I'm going to then check my other leg. 0 0.480. Now see that that's a different number, but it's still between 0.4 and 0.7. All that's telling you is that there's a voltage drop there. That's like there's some kind of relationship there. So you just basically analyzed that transistor and said, okay, well that's what one looks like. So is that one bad? Hell, if I know, how would I know? I only got one. I don't have all of the characteristics of a TIP-122 memorized, but there's one right next to it. So let's check another one. Oh, look. That one says 1.2 between the middle and the outside. And then if you go the other way, 0.480. So this one's different. See how if I go between... Oh, I'm using the wrong pin. I didn't move the pin. Okay, so I had to move over because I'm, i got to check the center pin, which is that one, right? 0.574 and... 1.2. Yeah, we did get something different. So see, that one's different. So on this one, between the middle and that one, we get 0 0.480. But on this one, if we do it, we get 1.2. So which one's messed up? Hell if I know, we'll have to check another one. <laughs> right? I've got 20 of them here, right? So let's move on to the third one. So I'm on the middle pin. Between it and the left, I'm getting 0.535, that's a voltage drop. And between it and there, what the hell? 0.118, well hell, that's different than this one, which is 1.1, and it's different than this one, which is 0 0.480. So this particular one is showing us a voltage drop between those two pins, 
This particular one is showing us up over 0.7, which is basically, basically there's no relationship there. So it, it's almost as if they're not connected. Anything above 0.7, it's like high resistance or, you know, so it's, it, there's really not a relationship there. And then the third one, it's down below 0.4, which means that's a short. It's not completely shorted, down to zero, but it it's lower than 0.4, so it's lower than the, the, the normal voltage drop you're supposed to see in a gate. So I've got three of them here. How the hell do I know which one is bad and which two are good? Or which two are bad and which one is good? How's it supposed to be? I would assume it's probably this one with the voltage drop, right? That's some kind of... There must be some reason that that's got the voltage drop and this one doesn't. See this one? All three of them have the voltage drop the one way, but that one is shorted that way. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, voltage drop. And then on the outside one. Aha! Uh -huh, it's between 0.4 and 0.7. So this one is just like this one. Right? Let's check this new one that looks kind of hacked up. Voltage drop on the left pin. Voltage drop on the other pin. So now we have three of them that are exactly the same. Now notice the, the, the actual reading is different. So see, all of these pins, this left pin is all tried to, tied together. I guess that's ground or whatever. So on this one you get 0 0.480 and we think it's good. On this one, you get 0.476, and we think it's good. On this one, you get 0.477. So they're all different, but they're kind of in the same range because they're between 0.4 and 0.7. That's kind of the parameters of it, right? So in my opinion, this one's bad and this one's bad in different ways. So this one with the, with the high um, relationship there, where it's up over 0.7, that one probably doesn't work. And this one, with the almost a short, that one's probably shorted on. Okay, so let's turn over and look. I Whenever I find one that's bad, I usually just bend it up so it looks different than the other one so I can go back and find it. So this is the one that I think is probably just not working. And this is the one I think is probably shorted. And as you can see, the whole damn side of the chip is blown off. Now you, so if I went through and just replaced the ones that looked ugly, I would have replaced that one because I would have saw it, but I wouldn't have noticed that that one probably doesn't work either. Okay. So I'm going to go through. I've got one, two, three, four, five of them here that are bad, and then there's one that's missing. So why is that one missing? It's because not all of these are used on all games. So if you looked on the, on the, uh, on the previous video, whenever we were doing the solenoid test, there's about five different solenoids that aren't used but they have the capability of being used so that means that five of these transistors don't even need to be in the board because you're never going to use it so in in a uh, flash it may have three pop bumpers but in lucky strike or lucky seven it's only got two pop bumpers and then this one maybe they don't use or maybe they use it for one of the 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 uh, score reels in the bottom or whatever or whatever it's just up to the, desi the designer and they usually didn't use everything on the board it's the same thing with the lamps in the lamp matrix they've got the capability of doing I think 64 bulbs or something like that well we can tell one two three four five six seven eight yeah it's probably 64 bulbs um, but the game you know they might only put 50 in it maybe they they had 14 bulbs that they just didn't use so in the matrix since they work on a matrix the bulbs there will be like eight spots that there's no bulb there because they just didn't wire it up and they don't need it in that particular game. Same thing with the switches. They probably got 64 switches available to, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think they've probably got 64 switches available too, but they may only need 40. So 24 of the switches, um, they don't even wire up. Same thing with the solenoids. So there's, there's a few solenoids in most of the games that aren't even used. I don't know if there's any system three through system seven that uses every one of them so you kind of need to look and see if you even need that transistor 
if you're fixing this at your house and you're in kind of a jam, you could just figure out which one of these transistors isn't used and use it to fix your one that's blown apart like this one. But I've got plenty of them, so I'm just going to get them, make sure they're all working. So, uh, so that's where we're at. That's a little bit of troubleshooting, simple troubleshooting to help you whenever you're doing board stuff on the bench. Um, the thing about the PIAs too, how we're checking for shorts, like I said, that's not a perfect test because they could still be screwed up, but we know they're not catastrophically screwed up. You can use a test ROM to, to test uh, the outputs and everything of it, but hopefully we won't have to do that just because it's more work. You know, you have to burn a test ROM. I'd have to either put it back in the game or rig up a test bench or something uh, with a power supply, but we'll, we'll do that if we have to. So I found one or two more uh, transistors on the other board that weren't right, but that one had five or six. Um, and those originally were TIP 122s, but you can always replace a TIP 122 with a TIP 102. It's got the same characteristics, but it's a little beefier. So, And they're real cheap. They're like a dollar. Okay, and I went ahead and on this one I replaced the connector. Now the original one was five eight pin bottom entry connectors so all together that's 40 pins okay and I replaced it but the ones I used were 10 pin ones so you only have to put four on okay so I did this one I did this one and that one I decided I would leave the original one because it's already been replaced by somebody and it looks pretty good. So I left it. All right. So, oh, and uh, I re-soldered the pins around the edge. There was one of these that had already been done too, so I didn't redo it because somebody else had already done it. It looked pretty good. And so we're now we're down to... Um, oh, let me look at the resistors up here first. Yes. This particular one, see this? Those are zero ohm jumpers. So this is the switch section, and someone has replaced those with zero ohm jumpers. So what that is, that's a little mod. These are, I'm sure you can tell just by looking at it. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> Those are higher than zero ohm jumpers. All of you people that have the naughty little limerick memorized can probably tell what it is by looking at it. Um, some of you get that, some of you don't. Okay, so this is the switch matrix. The reason that those have been replaced on that board is because in the later versions of these boards, I think it's I think it's system seven and up. Well, these were three through seven, so I think it's on system seven. They advised you to replace those because the system seven boards, MPU board and driver board, the way the software ran and blah 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 sometimes switch closures wouldn't get seen if that resistor was that value, the original value. So they advise everybody to replace those to upgrade it with zero ohm resistors. And this board now with the zero ohm resistors can be used in a system seven, a system three through seven. This board would not do well in a system seven because it has these wrong resistors in it. It will still work but you, uh, you won't see all of the switch closures. So if something hits fast, you may not see it. Uh, and this one also has the original one. Since we're using it in a... Oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. Those are also zero ohm. Let me look at it. Yeah. Those are also zero ohm resistors. So both of his have been upgraded. Mine has not. But mine is in a system three, so it doesn't need to be. Okay. I I think once you upgrade it, you can also use it in the older ones. It's just a fix they did later on. Okay, so I've got two things left on the on the Lucky Seven one. This thing is working. So this corrosion here, I don't even know what that's from. 
I'm going to clean it up a little bit with fiberglass pencil. You could replace those chips if you wanted to, but I know that this board works, so I don't want to do too much to it. And then we've got the ugly resistors, so I'm going to check them, and I'm going to leave them if they are within spec. So they're supposed to be 27 ohm, and they're probably like a 20% resistor. So if we're anywhere between, I don't know, 34 or so, and... Um, uh, 22 or so, 22 and 34 ohms, I'm going to leave it. And you might say, oh, they're burned up, they're going bad. Well, first of all, it's in the lamp section. So if those burnt completely up, what would happen is your lamp would uh, be dimmer. <laughs> right? Um, uh, it's, it's kind of just a cosmetic thing. And since we've lowered the wattage like we talked about with the different bulbs, I'm not too concerned about it. You can replace them if you want, but really, you're just doing it so it looks better, right? There's also a way to mod these where you use different transistors or whatever, and it um, it really lowers them. It, there, there was some there's some mod you can do where you can even take the resistors out or something like that. But anyway, I don't I don't usually do that. So I'm gonna check them, see if any of them are way out of spec. If they are, I'll replace that one. But I'm not too concerned about replacing the ones that are charred a little bit because we've addressed that by putting the different bulbs in it and it's going to be in home use so but on yours uh, you may want it to look real pretty like that one okay so that's all that's left i'm going to check that and then uh this one like i said i, I know is is already good we're going to pop one of those in and uh, give it a whirl and see if if it wants to uh act right so let's go check it out I made a mistake. Those are, they have a gold band, so they're actually 5% resistors. So I need them to be uh, 27, 5% of 27, math, 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 would be about 1 ohm, a little more than 1 ohm. So it needs to be like between 26 and 28, All right? So just to appease you, I can just see the hate mail coming from this one. Just so you know. See, that one looks burnt all to hell, right? It's close, people. I mean, come on. Come on now. It's close. Let's do another one. See what I'm saying? They don't really go bad that often. They just look bad. They look ugly, and I am not a vain person, you know. <laughs> so they all test good, with the exception of the one that they replaced. It's a 29. Now, why would they do that? You see how they did me? They replaced it with one that's 2% out of spec. Come on, now. Why would you do that? Or, I mean, a 10% out of spec. But it'll be okay. All right, so I think I think it's all good. I cleaned this up, got rid of some of that stuff. So uh, I, that one was already working anyway. But uh, let's now we can go try the, the flash ones in there. Okay, so this board up here is the original Lucky Seven uh, MPU board. It's tested working. Okay, we serviced it in the previous video, but it should be good to go. This driver board, uh, the the original driver board for the Lucky Seven, is also tested working. But this driver board is from James's uh, Flash. See, I've been calling him Mr. James, so I don't have to say James's. <laughs> Mr. James Flash Machine. Uh, so we've got the new edge connector on it, the new 40-pin inner board connector, they call it. And so we're going to try to do it the smart way. So... These connectors, if you didn't watch the previous video, these connectors are for the displays. The displays are hooked up, okay? The, the MPU runs the displays. So we shouldn't have an issue there because the driver board has nothing to do with the displays. So it's safe for us to, to go ahead and plug that in, okay? Now, when the driver board boots, the, uh, the MPU will... i got to see which one's which. I believe that's the MPU. The MP, the the CPU will try to talk with the driver board PIA chips. I guess that's the fourth one. I think. I don't know. We have to look that up too. <laughs> but it tries to talk to the PIA chips over this connection. 
So basically they have one big board that they've split into two boards, right? So it tries to talk to here. If one of these chips is shorted out or has got a big problem, it may not boot, okay? So that's the first thing that we're checking. Notice I've got everything else disconnected. Now, why would I do that? Because if this thing comes up and screws up, it could lock something on, it could lock the pop bumper on, burn the coil up. We're just trying to be safe. So let's see if that board will even boot with that driver board in it. See any fire? We shouldn't because nothing's connected. So what have we tested? Well, we're, we should be testing, we tested to see if this board will boot with those PIAs connected to it. If the board will boot with this MP, with this driver board connected to it, and if the board will make the displays work, okay? So you, uh, you saw the LEDs come on and then go back off. That's the diagnostic test that Williams had in their games, but to be honest, it's about useless. It doesn't really tell you much, so... Sometimes it'll do that and nothing is, uh, nothing is working. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, interesting. Okay, so it appears that we're in test mode. Okay. Now, how are we in test mode? None of the switches are plugged in. Remember, I didn't plug them in. So it looks like we're in the, the 04 is kind of the giveaway, I think. I think we're in test mode. And so it's running through the different test settings. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 1, 2... Three, four, five, six. See, it's running through the test settings. And the reason that that number is changing is because that's the setting value. So some of them, it'll be a number between one and five. And some of them, it'll be the high score, which is 350,000. That's the one recorded. That's the top three high scores or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. There's where you get a free game or whatever, right? So it's running through test mode. Now, how is it doing that without the switches plugged in? These are the switch connectors. I don't even have them plugged in. It's because something screwed up here. One of those chips is messed up, or the PIA is bad. Something's going on. So, uh, or it could be those zero ohm resistors. Wouldn't that be some crap? Wouldn't that be some crap? I better go look at that and see if it's even possible to put a board with zero ohm resistors in a System 3. Since this is a System 3, it's one of the very first solid state games William made, Williams made, so it could be that if you swap those to zero ohm resistors it really doesn't like it if uh, nothing's plugged in. Let me do a little research on that. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm looking this up with, uh, if you don't know, uh, a gentleman named Clay had a website, pinrepair.com. He still has it, but I don't think he has all of this information still up on there. He may though. I uh, had a website up years ago that is where I learned to fix most of this stuff, right? And Mr. Clay knows his stuff. So Mr. Clay has put this in his uh, William System 3 to system, system 6 Repair to System 7 Repair Guide. He says, it's a good idea to upgrade System 3 to System 6 driver boards to be upward and downward compatible from System 7 to System 3. Okay, now we have, these boards are going to go in a flash, which is a System 4 or a System 6. To do this, replace the 1000 ohm System 3 or 330 ohm System 4 through 6 resistors R204 through R211 in the upper right hand corner with zero ohm jumpers. System 7 driver boards already have this modification done. So you see what I'm talking about. One, so that one board with those zero ohm uh, jumpers already in it must have originally been an actual System 7 board. And then the other one that someone has modded, they did that so that it will work in System 7. Basically, you can't use that board in a System 7 without that, those jumpers in it. It says, the decrease in these, the decrease in these switch matrix resistor ohms 
was done to increase the current drive through the switch matrix. For example, if a switch or connector was dirty and had slight resistance, the switch could still be sensed by the CPU driver board combo. There is a rumor. There is a rumor. Gong, gong, gong. That using a jumpered System 7 style driver board in a System 6 or earlier game may result in random switch closures during gameplay. This does not seem to be the case, but keep it in mind if having random switch closure problems. One thing for sure, though, is using a non-jumpered System 3 to System 6 driver board game in a System 7 game will definitely result in switch closures being missed. So what does that mean for us? Well, uh, it can't start a game because I don't have the solenoids hooked up so it can't kick the ball out or anything. Um, so one of the only things that it may do if it thinks that switches are closed is to put it in test mode. So, hmm. so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and plug the switches in. So it may just be doing that because we don't have them plugged in. Maybe that's how they act on a zero ohm one without that plugged in. So I'm going to turn it off, plug the switches in next, which is this area, and then turn it back on and see if we get anything different. Okay, so we're just trying to do this in a safe order. We started with just the displays. Now we've got the displays and the switches. These are the lamps. They're still unplugged. And these are the solar ones. So let's see if it does the same thing. No, it is not. See the number 21? That's probably the number of credits. It may have just been racking up credits uh, because it was doing the same thing with the coin door switch. So if the game is in, so my thinking is the game was in attract mode. There's not much of an attract mode on this one, especially since we have all the lamps disconnected. But since the solenoids aren't uh, connected, the game can't start a, a game because it can't kick the ball off of the switch here. It can't even tell that the, that the ball is on the switch there. Maybe it can sense it or whatever, but um, so it can't start a game. So the start button, if if the board was making all of the switches connect, the start button wouldn't do anything because it can't kick the ball off the thing. So what it, what I think it was doing was maybe switching this back and forth, and maybe pressing the test button over and over and over again, and maybe pressing the coin switch over and over again. Because in a track mode, that's really all you can do. You can't use the flippers, you can't use the switches on the play field. So, I think if you boot one up that has zero ohm resistors, it will, uh, you'll have all kinds of phantom switch closures because it isn't actually connected to the system. So I'm going to test that theory by doing it one more time. So I'm going to turn it off, disconnect it, turn it back on, see if it does it again, and then turn it off, plug them back in, <laughs> and see if it's cool again. Now why would I go through all that trouble? It's because I, I want to make sure this board works before I send it back to Mr. James. You know, I'm trying to test it the best that I can. So if, if I had something that was acting up, and I don't really have a good explanation for it, I want to make sure that I've, I've got it straightened out. So let's try it one more time to see if my theory of why it's doing that's correct. All right, so I disconnected them and turned it back on, and no, it's not doing it. So maybe something we need to look at. We'll play, the, we'll play it a little bit, just keep our eye on it, but you saw what it was doing. Hmm... But now it's not doing it with everything disconnected. All right, well, that's an interesting little thing. So I'll plug those back in, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug the lamps in, and let's see if all of our lamps work uh, or if anything's tripping on that. We're basically testing various areas of the, uh, of the driver board. All right, we've got our uh, displays plugged in, our switches plugged in, and our lamps plugged in, but we do not have the solenoids plugged in yet. So we have two lights lit on the play field. So what does that mean? See how we've got the one flashing over and over again? 
and then the one is flashing on and off. That's how it's supposed to act. So why are there only two lights on the play field? That's the attract mode. That's all they did. This was one of the very first solid state games. This is like before attract modes really. They just didn't have much going on. So we can go into test. Okay, we're in this. Well, let me make sure I'm in the right test. There we go. Okay, so we're in bulb test. Now, this one didn't work on the other driver, too. It's something with the socket or something. We haven't got to that yet. It looks like all of the bulbs are flashing, although they seem to be flashing too fast. I don't know why that would be. Okay, so I think our bulb test is working. Still not so sure about the switches. I guess I could go into switch test. Let's see if I can even figure out how to do that. That's solenoid test. I think maybe this is the switch test. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, see the 20? So that's telling me the last switch I hit. 19. 21. 22. 35. 39. 40. I don't want to hit the drops. Let's see. 18. I'm literally just touching switches. 37. 10. 9, 11, 12, 13, spinner, here comes the spinner, 14, 38, looks to me like the switches are working fine, okay, cool, alright, so switches we think are working fine, we think the lamps are working fine, so now I'm going to turn it off and we'll plug in the solenoids, turn it on and see if anything uh, sticks. So your displays and your solenoids are really the kind of the only things that you have to really worry about doing this because uh, they can burn up expensive stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it on and see if anything locks on and then turn it right back off if it does. Okay, we seem cool. Did you hear the little click? That was the coin door lockout pulling in. It's supposed to do that. So we're going to try to go into test again. I am in test, but it's not doing it. It may just be that these have a... Since it's such an early game, that it's got a really crappy test. When I was running the test mode before, I was running it with the flash board in it, which is, has the flash flipper ROMs, System 6 or whatever. I don't know about that. I don't know if this is... Okay, we're back into game play mode. Well, if I could figure out how to get the damn thing in test. Oh, I think we did it. Yep, that's the display test. Okay. Lamp test. That's what's going on. The reason they're, they're flashing quicker is because what we were running the flash test before. Pun intended. Okay, uh, so next one is the solenoid test. So you're just going to hear a bunch of things going off. We're just seeing if anything's missing.
Drop targets. Drop targets. Maybe. Yeah. Nope. Did the drop targets do it? Oh, that's probably that. Yep, that was those. So it sounds a little weak, um, which may be a grounding problem on the board because I don't have all the screws in the board. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good though. Okay, so the way the solenoids work, like let's take a pop bumper, is the, the, the power supply sends power to it, and then the board sinks the other line that goes to it to ground. So the board is responsible for the ground. And the way this board gets its ground is through these screws on the edge connecting it to this metal plate in the back. right? So whenever I was testing it, I just had it in there with one screw in it and two screws in the top. But I didn't have any of the screws on this side in it. Right, so my theory is is that it just wasn't getting a very good ground. It's got to sink enough ground to that thing to get a damn solenoid to pop on, right? So I put two more screws in it. Still don't have all of them in it, but I will. And uh, it seems plenty strong enough. Now the, the chimes sounding like crap are just because the uh, I haven't rebuilt them yet. But we'll get to that. We're still working on driver boards, people. But if you can see, it has plenty of snap. So, and all of the solenoids, and I haven't rebuilt the drop target yet either. All of the solenoids appear to be working just fine. So I think that driver board, I think that driver board's good to go. So uh, it's time to test the next one. All right, so we're on the flash driver board number two. This one also has the zero ohm resistors in it. So we'll see if we get that same weird thing with the switches we got that one time. Um, but first, uh, again, we've just got the displays plugged in. We're just trying to see if the MPU will boot uh, with that driver board attached to it. Keep in mind too, this is the board that had all of the tip, the tip 122s that were burnt up where we replaced like six or seven of them. So it may not even boot. Okay, we got our two red lights flashed, which is usually a good sign. Right? <laughs> so it has booted up into a track mode. We have 19 credits because I started two games earlier. So yeah, it will boot with that driver board attached. So now we're going to turn it off and uh, plug in the switches. Notice I keep turning it off too. You don't want to ever unplug stuff, plug stuff in while it's turned on. Good way to fry stuff. Okay, so our switches are plugged in. Nothing crazy's going on. Ah, uh, look, I've got 20 credits now. What's up with that? Boy, I'll bet an operator would hate that. So why would that happen? It's because that damn switch is stuck. <laughs> so of course we're getting credits. The switch is stuck. If it's stuck closed, you should get a credit. It might explain too. See it? That might explain too why we were getting 21 credits earlier. So I need to mess with this coin door a little bit. Williams had the weirdest setup on their coin door. It 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 defies all logic. So it's something like that. There's a little wire in there, and then when the quarter falls through, it hits that. And it makes those two blades touch together. And then it should spring back up and they're not touching anymore. So, so we've got 20 credits. That may be all you're supposed to have or something. <laughs> but we had 21 earlier. All right, but our switches seem to be, uh, I mean, now we can't really tell. 
but we'll have to go into the test mode, which I guess we could go ahead and do if I can figure out how to get into test mode. Yeah, see this one, it, it just works different than they usually do. Usually you, you put it, you put that switch down and hit the button and you go right into There's a diagnostic mode and a test mode. So the test mode is like settings. And then the diagnostic mode. There we go. Yeah, it's just a weird setup. So there's the display test. But again, the driver board has nothing to do with that. This is the lamp test, which we can't do because they're not poked up yet. This is solenoid test. And this one is switch test. 27, 20, 19, 21, 22, 38. Keep in mind, too, oh, the two that it gave us are the two drop targets dropped. That's why it said two switches were connected whenever we started. So as I'm hitting the different switches, it is closing them. I don't know, we're looking pretty good, people. Um, so what was I just saying? Okay, this is a Williams System 3. Like I said, it's one of the very first solid state games. So the reason I can't get in the test mode and do it right is because it's a little different because it was like the second test mode ever, right? If you look over here, so it says chart one, chart two. The way you set um, settings was you use the LEDs and you set dip switches. So you had to go in and set dip switches and then press a button to make it store the setting and then set the dip switches a different way and press the button again to make it store the setting and then set the dip switches a different way and press the button again to make it save the setting. It's just the biggest pain in the ass ever. So the way they eventually did it in system four is uh, you go into test and whenever there's a setting you don't like you hit the start button or the coin switch or something to change the value but on this one to change the value you have to use these uh, let's see if it says on here I've never actually even used those because you can uh, you can upgrade the ROMs to where you don't need them. And the, the default is like one play for a quarter, so everything works good. Okay, so uh, the switches are working. Everything seems cool. I'm going to turn it off. We're going to plug the lamps in and see if the lamps work. Okay, same as before. Lamps are all plugged in. The solenoids are not plugged in. Very cool. And I, I didn't specify earlier, but there's two types of lamps. There's general illumination, which is like under here. Those just are hardwired, and then there's lamps that are computer controlled, so that's what we're plugging in. We're plugging in the ones that the computer can actually control. So you see it's doing the same thing it was doing on the other one. The one's blinking, the other one's flashing. So that one up there says high score to date, and then it's saying 350,000. All right, so same thing. There's really no attract mode because it's so early, so we're going to try to cripple our way through uh, test mode again. It's something like you. You move the switch somewhere and hit the test button and it does it. <laughs> Alright, we got it. So there's the displays. And there's the lamps. Yeah, so see how it's flashing really fast too? It's just the early test revision apparently. All of our lamps are working. So everything's cool. So you know what that means. We tested our switches, we tested our lamps, and so now we're on to our solenoids. And this is the one that had all the burnt up tip 102s. So if you've got six of these burn up, the likelihood that one of these support chips is messed up through the roof. Okay, we plugged in the solenoids. Let's see, here we go. Okay, I didn't hear anything lock on, although I did hear the uh, coin door one come on, but it's supposed to. All right. Looking 
good. Everything's cool. All right, let's try to go and do test and do the solenoid test. One of these days, I'm going to figure out. Oh, look, I went right into it somehow. I just heard the door one do its thing. Okay, there's the lamp test. Yeah, see, it's just running slower. So that was that. That's that one. It's the ball. They're just weaker in this test. Auga. I've got the screws in the board now. It's just uh, the test must pulse them shorter or something. Okay, that's all of them. Yep. So it's not strong enough to lift the drop targets in test. It just clicked, clicked, and it's not it's not strong enough to get the ball all the way out and test. So we're going to have to do it actually in gameplay like we did the other one. Turn it off. Turn it back on. The coin door one came on. Yeah. So see how it was able to pop the ball all the way out. Give us some action. Drop targets need some work, don't they? Williams drop targets were crappy, man. And when do I ever say anything was crappy? When when do I ever say anything was crappy? The Williams drop targets were just a bad design. But you can fix them. They can be fixed. Yeah, this thing's playing fine, people. You know what that means? We got two good driver boards. So now we need to put the original one back in. And we got to do. I won a game. We've got to do something about those freaking chimes. All right, folks. So I slid the third board in, plugged it all up, and uh, it had booted back up. Everything seems cool. We're going to play a game just to make sure. But there you go. So leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. Do you know about that? There is a link to Amazon down below. If you're going to buy anything at Amazon, not what we're selling. I'm not selling nothing on Amazon. <laughs> if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, use our link and it gives us 3% of whatever you bought. That adds up, people. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And also, don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. Now, if you don't know about my brother, Donnie, he's literally my brother. He's half crazy. But some people say that about me. Maybe together we're one crazy. Uh, but uh, if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you may enjoy watching he and I work on uh, old buildings. We've, we bought a couple small buildings in a town, uh, a small town near here in their downtown area we're trying to fix them up to help revitalize their downtown so it's pretty cool go check it out let's see if this sucker will play with this third driver board on it so we got to rebuild the, the chimes um, i've got to get this thirty thousand light working the drop targets are not dropping very well boy that spinner's working though Oop. See how the drop came up, went back down. We got issues, people. We got issues here. Mm. This is before um, before the soundboards. Way before. When the companies first went solid state, they were afraid that people that liked EMs wouldn't like the solid state stuff. So they put 
EM stuff in the games, like, uh, <laughs> one of the Williams, it gave me another, uh, another credit back. It's staying at 20 for some reason, but that's with three different driver boards. So I don't know. Uh, we got a switch stuck somewhere or we keep winning. Oh yeah. That's what's going on. I keep winning the high score and it's giving me a free game. Boy, that's awesome. Uh, whenever they first started with the solid state games, they were afraid that, that nobody would like them and that people would, would miss what's so great about EM games. So on one of the games, we've got a video here, uh, on our web, on, um, YouTube, I think it was hot tip. I think that's the one. Um, so it was like a horse racing game that came out around this time. I think it was their, it may have been their first solid state. So it may have been the one before this one or something like that. Well, anyway, there was an EM score reel down in the bottom of the cabinet that didn't even do anything. They put it down there so it would go click, click, click. And you would hear that familiar sound of the score reels. Awesome. The, the actual little drum on it doesn't have any numbers on it because it didn't need to. Pretty wild. And we put that all on video. You can go check it out here on our channel. Uh, but this one actually has score reels in it, so that kind of keeps the EM thing going. And it has the chimes, although they're not working very well right now, uh, which made it sound like an EM. And so they did everything they could. So Williams and Bally came out kind of early with them. I can't remember which one was first. I haven't looked that up in a while. But Williams and Bally had solid state games out pretty early. And Gottlieb waited like an extra year and a half or something. They didn't want to let go because Gottlieb was the king of the EMs at the time. So and there was a lot of nice Bally and Williams ones too, but the Gottlieb ones were like the, the wedge heads and everything. Cool stuff. So they didn't want to let go of it. They wanted to keep making those EMs. But finally they relented and they waited a little bit too late, I think. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Next time we will work on those chimes we will work on the drop targets we will probably take a look at uh, mr james's uh, soundboard see if well, i can't really test it but i can maybe look at it and see if we can tell if anything's wrong with it maybe we can compare the the chimes and the soundboard um and we'll get her a little more playable so we'll see you on the next video i hope you enjoyed it staying up late with us tonight see you next time